So, you find your kitten with a snotty nose and gunk in his eyes, struggling to breathe and eat. Your kitten may be suffering from cat flu. Watch this video to find out what you need to know about this disease and what you need to do in order to get it back to the lively ball of fur that it used to be. Hey guys, Dr. Peter. I'm a veterinarian from South Africa. Now, cat flu is a broad term used to describe an upper respiratory infection that is usually caused by two types of viruses, feline herpes virus and feline calici virus. Feline herpes virus attacks the cell lining in the eyes and the nose, while feline calici virus attacks the cell lining in the mouth, specifically the tongue, gums, lips, heart palate and the throat, both causing inflammation and pain. Both these viruses weakens the cat's immunity, which means that bacteria can more easily infect the kitten, resulting in a secondary bacterial infection, which usually causes the symptoms that we tend to see. The most common bacteria that is usually associated with cat flu is called Bordetella bronchiseptica and Chlamydophila felis. Now, cat flu is more prominent in young kittens and older cats, as well as those suffering from feline leukemia or feline AIDS, as all of these groups tend to have weaker immune systems. It is a highly contagious disease and can spread by means of direct contact with other cats, like when they play or snuggle together, through air droplets when sneezing or coughing, and through contaminated objects such as shed cages and food bowls. Now, you do get different levels of severity with cat flu. Most cats will just have a mild, transparent, snotty nose and some teary eyes. But when the secondary bacterial infection becomes more severe, the secretions from the nose and the eyes will turn yellowish brownish and become thickened, what we call mucoperlant, and these can then form hard crusts which can block the airways, therefore making it more difficult to breathe, which can cause them to make these wheezing type of breathing sounds. The kitten won't feel great overall and will thus also show signs of lethargy, weakness, fever, and some may also be inappetent, especially if the infection inside the mouth is so severe that it causes ulcers on the tongue and cheeks, therefore making it more painful and difficult to chew and swallow. Other common symptoms include eye squinting, sneezing, coughing and drooling, and some kittens may also develop eye ulcers. When left untreated for too long, the infection can spread to the lower parts of the cat's respiratory system and can thus result in a pneumonia, which is very difficult to treat and usually, unfortunately, results in death. Now, diagnosis is usually made based on the appearance and the history of the cat, meaning the cat's age, vaccination status, and the duration of the clinical signs. Your vet will need to do a thorough physical exam where he will specifically look for secretions from the nose and the eyes, open the cat's mouth to look for ulcers or sores on the tongue and the cheeks, and then you will also have to listen to the heart of a stethoscope to try and hear if there is any compromised breathing going on. Your vet will also need to feel for any enlarged lymph nodes, especially around the face and the chest area, and you will need to take the kitten's temperature with either a small thermometer or a type of scanner to see if they have a fever. You may also make a blood smear to look for any signs of infection, and if he does suspect a lower respiratory tract infection, such as pneumonia, you may also recommend chest x-rays to assess its severity. If your vet is fancy, he may also take a swab from the secretions from the nose, trachea or eyes, and send it to the lab for bacterial culture or a PCR test in order to confirm the presence of RNA from the feline calici and herpes viruses. Now, just like most viruses, there isn't really a specific drug that can kill the virus itself. What we need to aim for is treating and preventing secondary bacterial infections for long enough and offering nutritious food in order to allow the kitten's immune system to recover and therefore to fight off the virus itself. Mild cases of cat flu is usually treated with an injectable form of a broad spectrum antibiotic such as amoxicillin clavulonic acid to help fight off the infection as well as an anti-inflammatory drug such as meloxicam to help lower the fever and to take away the pain in the mouth. If your kitten is having any trouble breathing through the nose, your vet may also prescribe a mucolytic to help clear the airways and to remove the mucus. If the kitten is still active and eating, they will usually be sent home with a 5-7 to seven course of the oral form of all three of these types of meds. If your kitten has a severe eye infection, your vet may prescribe a pet specific eye wash that you will need to use to rinse out the infection 4-6 to six times a day 
as well as a topical antibiotic such as ofloxacin, which you need to apply for about five to 10 days, depending on your vet's instructions. Now, if the kitten does not want to eat, is lethargic, has any difficulty breathing and is dehydrated, it will need more intensive care and will thus need to be admitted for hospitalization. Your kitten will ideally be put on a drip, but it is often difficult to find a vein to put an IV catheter in. So in these cases, we will first give intraperitoneal fluids where we basically inject a ringus lactate solution into the kitten's abdomen. The kitten will then receive the injectable form of both the an antibiotic and anti-inflammatory, as well as an immune booster every single day, and its eyes will be cleaned four to six times a day as well. If the kittens are really weak and refuses to eat, a nasogastric tube can be placed where we basically insert a small tube through their nostril and nasal passages all the way into the stomach where we can then inject food and water directly into their tummies. Usually once the kitten received its meds and starts to feel a little bit better, it will start eating like a monster, which is always a good sign. I had some kittens brought to the clinic which was on the brink of death, but soon after giving them some fluids and injections, they flipped around and ate more food than most of the dogs in the hospital. Apart from this, it is important to give your kitten some TLC, aka tender loving care, which means keeping them warm and dry and always making sure they have enough clean fresh water and food as well as cleaning out their litter daily. Kittens can be little tornadoes in the cages and they may step in their poo and then in their food and water, so maintaining good hygiene is vital for their recovery. Make sure to gently wipe away the discharge from the nose and the eyes with the eye wash your vet prescribed, but even diluted salt water on cotton wool will also work just as fine. What will also really help is to let your cat sit in the bathroom while you take a bath or a shower, as the steam will basically act as a type of nebulizer, which will break up and loosen up the secretions in the airways, therefore making it much more easier to breathe. You can also place the cat in a wire basket next to a bowl of steaming water and then cover the two with a towel for about five minutes at a time, two to four times a day. Smell plays a major part in a cat's appetite. So if they have a stuffy nose, they will have a decreased sense of smell, which will eventually lead to a decreased appetite. So in terms of diet, they will need food that is soft, highly palatable and high in calories. We usually recommend the recovery cans from Royal Canin or the feline kitten mousse from Heels, but sardines are also very effective to just stimulate the appetite and to get it going. A great nutritional supplement called L-Lysine can also be given to your cat. L-Lysine contains the amino acid lysine, which helps to limit the multiplication process of the feline herpes virus, which will reduce the severity of the disease. Guys, if you found this video helpful so far, then please hit that like button so that this video can spread to more people who are looking for answers to help their sick kittens. Thank you. By the way, I will leave links down in the description to all of my product recommendations for the at-home treatment of cat flu, so make sure to check that out as well. Since upper respiratory infections can be caused by a variety of different disease agents, it is not always possible to prevent them entirely. However, the best way that you can possibly protect your cat against cat flu is to make sure that it receives its core vaccines, which needs to be given three times at the age of eight weeks, 12 weeks, and 16 weeks. And after that, every one to three years, depending on your vet's recommendations. Cat flu is extremely contagious to other kittens. So if you have a litter of kittens, it is best to separate the sick from the healthy ones. Make sure that shared items like bowls and litter boxes are properly disinfected with bleach after using them to help kill off any remaining bacteria. The eel kittens should always be handled last and you should wash and disinfect your hands, face and boots before touching any other healthy cats. I personally always recommend to start treatment for all the other kittens in the litter as the chances are good that if one is infected that it will eventually spread to the rest and as mentioned earlier, Cat flu is not something you want to leave for too long as it can quickly become very dangerous and even life threatening. It is also important to know that once a cat has been infected with these viruses, it is possible that they will carry the virus for the rest of their lives and that they can have a relapse of symptoms when they get older, especially after a stressful event that causes a decreased immune system, such as rehoming, boarding, surgery, trauma, or even severe cold. They will also shed the virus particles during these times, so it is important to keep your young kittens away from them until they are fully vaccinated as well. 
So if you have a young kitten showing these signs, make sure to get them to the vet for a checkup sooner rather than later. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any questions. Thanks for watching and have a lack of day. Cheers.